Exactly. We saw some mixed messages between the household survey, which showed a decline in employment and a rise in unemployment, and the payroll survey, which showed an increase and a bigger than expected increase with upward revisions. At the end of the day, we generated 4.1 million new paychecks year to date. That is almost double the pace of annual paycheck gains in the 2010s and the second highest level of annual job gains since 1978. It's pretty stunning and that's why we've got aggregate demand still going up even as the bite of inflation and rate hikes kicks in. Individuals have lost ground and then some to inflation who were employed, but those additional paychecks are what's the problem. And the Fed, in order to get inflation down in a productivity environment that's the worst since 1982, they have to not only hit the demand for workers, but also, unfortunately, they have to affect the one place they can affect supply, and that is via a rise in the unemployment rate. I mean, it's, t it's, it's awful to even talk about, and I'm not sure, Diane, you and I have been speaking for, what, 20, 25 years? And... I'm not sure I've ever talked Might be with you. longer than that, Brian, you, for me. <laughs> yeah, or just felt like that. 70 years, Sullivan. Here's the thing. I don't think we've ever had this conversation. It's so bizarre. But you're the economist. I'm not. But tell our audience, my guess is wage-based inflation is very sticky. Once you give somebody a raise, what are you going to do? Take it back? No way. It is, it is sticky. The kind of inflation we're seeing is sticky. Even though wages are underpacing overall inflation gains, the problem is productivity growth has fallen and unit labor costs have risen. And so that's cost push inflation out there. But it's also this sort of aggregate demand is being buoyed. Individuals feel like the majority of Americans feel like we're either in a recession or on the cusp of a recession. Well, that's because if they had a job this year, they've lost all they've gained and then some in mm. those wage acceleration to inflation. But the aggregate demand is still there in buoying inflation and the loss in productivity. Unless we were to see a magic overnight surge in productivity growth, the, wage, the wages that we see are adding to inflation. We've also seen turnover rates slow down a bit, which is helping to cool wage gains a little bit, but not enough to really bring inflation back down to reasonable levels. What we want to see is a labor market that's more in balance so that we can see wages outpace inflation. But I often sort of liken what we're seeing to cancer, and that is that cancer, you know, left unaddressed can metastasize and become something more acute and more fatal. And what the Fed's issue now is being the oncologist, I've been on the end of those um, discussions, unfortunately, giving the bad news that here's what we have to do to cure you it's not going to be fun, but it's better than the alternative. Yeah, and, and we're, and we're an so glad. Yeah, we're, uh, uh, by the way, some members of the Sullivan family in the same boat, Dan, we're glad that you and, uh, and, and others are, are doing well now on that.